sometimes we want to be able to check what a type is and we don't necessarily know what that type is if if that makes sense let's say we have like a generic function and it can take in one of many different types maybe it's even doing dynamic dispatch with the any trait uh in that case it can be really helpful for us to know at least like to be able to compare against other types to see what type it is. Now, uh, for example, for the big project we're doing at the end of this course, uh, we are um, we're going to be storing types um, based upon well their, their type. So if we have like you know U32s, we want a vector of just a bunch of U32s. Let's go ahead and sort of like create what this might look like. So we'll probably have some kind of like hash map. Uh, so let's do a let mute. Um, maybe it's uh, this will be like all of our uh, components. So components equals a hash map. Um, and then we have to sort of set what this is going to look like. Um, so let's do do hash map. Now for the key, it's going to be something. We'll figure that out in just a second. Um, but for the value, we know this is going to be a vector. And let's just have this be um, an any type here. So a box uh, with a dyne any. And then we'll also just because we, we noticed in that example, uh, the lesson about any that you know, having the plus static is is helpful as well. So if I do this, we kind of need to know what is going to go into here. Um, if I want like all U32s to be together, if I want all F32s to be together, um, uh, well, it's kind of hard. I don't want to say something like a T here, uh, but there is something we can do. Every single type has its own unique type ID, and it's an identifier that's kind of hashed, but also we can't be promised to be hashed all the time because future versions of Rust may change what the definition of this type ID is. But as long as we're consistent during the runtime, then it's guaranteed to be the same as each other. So I'm going to say type ID uh, and pull this in. So type ID actually comes from standard any here. So if I save you, uh, we also need to pull in any. We're going to be happy here. And now it's just yelling us that we're not using this. So let's go ahead and insert something in. So let's say we have like a little bit of data. Let's say maybe we want like a U32 data. Um, do let uh, U32 data. Uh, maybe this is something like a health. I'll just call this our health. And we'll just say this is 100 and it's a U32. And I want to insert this in here or we're going to have our health itself and then the type ID. Well, if I want to get the type ID, there's actually a couple different ways for me to get that. Uh, I can get the type ID using uh, maybe like the equivalent of a static method on the type ID struct. So that health type ID equals type ID um, of and then I have to use uh, a TurboFist syntax to get this out there. So this is going to be just a U32. And then I run it and that gives me the type ID. So if I want to insert this in now, we can just do components.insert. Uh, this is going to be the health type ID. And then the value is going to be, um, it's going to be a vector of health. So a vec. with health inside. OK, great. Uh, oh, we need to put this in a box new with the health inside there. That way it implements that dine any plus static. OK, that's great. Now, there's another way for us to get access to the type ID of something. Um, let's go ahead and maybe like extract out this thing and see if I can get the type ID off of it. 
So uh, let's see, we're gonna do a, well, let's iterate through. So we'll do a four, and then I think we can get the key, which we know is gonna be the type ID, um, and then the value. in components so this is the let's call this the component type id and this is going to be the component value now i want to get the type id out of that one now i know that this is what it was stored in as but uh Im imagine that this is like we don't actually have access to I have just this any type here and I don't know what it is. Maybe I don't even trust that this is the right type. Maybe I think that I accidentally did it wrong. Well, we can access the, the, uh, the actual type ID off of the any type because it does remember something about what it used to be before it became an any. So let's do a let our type ID equal to component value let's get the first of these and then we're going to just do type id and it's a method now the any trait um, defines the type id method and because the any trait is automatically added to pretty much everything in rust even your custom types um, then that means we can run dot type id on pretty much anything and so that gives us our type id here now let's say uh i want to actually like test that out um maybe i want to inside of this components not just store healths as like all u32s because perhaps i want to store many u32s well the easiest way that i found is to create a wrapper type for everything so let's do something like a, a struct, like a tuple struct. So let's do a struct. Um, we have this like health here. Let's do something else. Let's do like speed. Speed, I'm just gonna make this a tuple type here uh, with the U32. And at this point, I can now create this. Let's go ahead and do a uh, let speed equals speed let's maybe like 150 whatever whatever that means um and then we're going to insert this in now i can get the uh the the type id separately so let's do that speed type id between speed dot type id and we're going to insert this so components dot insert uh speed type id and then the value is this um box new speed okay now i think something what i want to do here is i want to let's let let's debug this um type id here so we can actually see what these are and if i run this uh oh you're not uh, oh it needs to be a vector uh right it's a vector of these boxes Vec. Uh, let's let's try that here we can actually see these are what the type ids look like they're not uuids like that would look very different they're just just in this case just a, a hash in some way they're all numbers but the documentation for type ID does let us know that uh, Rust reserves the right to change them. And they might be different between different versions of Rust. So never, ever, ever hard code a type ID and expect it to be the same, even one run to the next. Even if it happens to be the same on your computer, it's not guaranteed to be the same. So don't rely upon it. That being said, Within one run of a code, um, it is guaranteed to be the same. So that way, this is why I can actually use type IDs as a key here and to ensure that they go into the correct area that they're supposed to go in. You can imagine that if I want to add another speed here, I can just spin up another speed. 
and I can you know, get a do a get on that type and then you know send that off. Anyways, that's all about type IDs. They're a really cool nifty little thing. I've generally only used them when I'm working with the any trait, uh, which is one of the reasons why they're in the any uh, module in the standard library. But uh, it's a cool little trick to be able to pull out whenever you need it. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.